Here we have a diagram representing the inputs and outputs of a function f of x is equal to x plus 5. And what this represents is pretty self-explanatory. The left represents all of the inputs of our function, and the right represents all of the corresponding outputs. So like as you can see here, we have the input 1, which corresponds to the output of 6, because f or 1, or if we perform our function on the input of 1, we get 1 plus 5, which is equal to 6. Similarly, if you were to take an input of negative 1, we would get f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 plus 5, giving us an output of 4. So the, cor the input of 1 corresponds to the output of 4. So what we are basically doing is here we're taking our input, performing our function f on it in order to get our output. So we're taking our input 1, performing f on 1, as we, we can see here, to get our output of 6. Same thing's going on here, we're performing f on negative 1 in order to obtain an output of 4. Now taking some input, performing f on it, and producing an output is simple enough. But what can we do when we are given an output, let's say 10, and we are asked to find out what x value or what we have to input into f in order to obtain the output of 10. So how do we get from our output back to our input? So going from our input to our output, we just performed f. So what do we have to perform to go from our output to our input? You've probably realized by now that the answer to this question is 5 because if to get from our input or our x value to our output, we simply have to add 5. So if we want to go from our output to our input, we just have to do the opposite. We subtract 5. And this operation that we performed over here, this tiny subtraction of 5, can be referred to as the inverse function. So it's basically the inverse or the opposite of the function. So we perform our normal function to get from our input to our output and we perform our inverse function to get back from our output to our input. So once again for example if we have an output value of let's say 12 and we want to find out what the input value is we perform our inverse function which is subtracting 5 in order to get our input value of 7. So we denote our inverse function or the function that gets us from our output back to our input as f inverse, like this little to the power of minus 1 means inverse. So to get from our output to our input we have to apply f inverse. Okay, now that you have a basic understanding of what an inverse function is, I'm going to show you how to solve for one. So let's say we have our, use the same example, f of x is equal to x plus 5 and we have to find f inverse of x and this just means that we're denoting it in terms of x which you'll it may seem confusing now but you'll get to understand it in a little bit so we start out by writing our equation in the form of y is equal to x plus 5 and you may be wondering why do we use the term y it's just so that our function looks a bit less clunky. Now remembering what a uh, inverse function is, we're basically expressing our input in terms of our output. So over here that means we're expressing our input or x in terms of y. So we want to get an expression where x is equal to some operation involving y. And what that basically means is we want to get 
x alone. So doing that over here is very simple. We simply just subtract 5 from both sides. So we do my minus 5 is equal to x plus 5 minus 5, which is equal to x. So x, or our input, is equal to y, or our output, minus 5. And now we just need to express our answer in the notation that's shown in the question. So we write f inverse of x is equal to x minus 5. This is our final answer. And if we look back, we see that in order to get to our input from our output, or when we perform f inverse, we are simply just subtracting minus 5, or doing the reverse of f of x.